Hi, in this video we are going to continue working on our crazy ball game, uh, make it a little more like a game by adding score and a few messages. So this is where we left it off. So we had a ball that was every 500 milliseconds moving to a random location on the screen and changing between either red, green, or yellow. So what I've done uh, in the meantime is add a few comments about what our functions do. So now what I want to do is, we've used timers to get our animation working, but what I want to do now is use mouse clicks to respond to some, to some user input. So if the user clicks the mouse, and they, they click the circle, and it is green, we give them a point, and if they click a circle that's not green, or they miss a circle, then we take away a point. So what I want to do now is I want to respond to a mouse click. So I say mouse click method. And we're going to call that function, uh, our callback function, click handler. Okay, so we'll write function click handler. And that takes a parameter e. So, what do we want to do here? Well, the first thing we want to do is we want to see if there's an element at the location that the user clicked. And there's a handy function to do this, which is um, called get element at. So that gets the element at that location on the screen. So it could be a circle, it could be a rectangle, it could be nothing. So we say get the element at e.getx, e.gety. Okay, so this will either return us an element or it will return us null if nothing's there. So what we want to check is, well, if the element is not equal to null and if the element dot get color is equal equal to color dot green. So that means we actually have clicked something and the color of that something we've clicked is green, then they did a good job. So we'll print line like great. And so that's just going to go into our little console down here. And otherwise that means they missed the ball or they clicked the wrong color. We'll print line fail. So let's see what happens now. Okay, so we have our, our ball changing colors and moving, and if I click when it's, let's see, can I get click it when it's green? Oh, no, I missed it. No. Great, I got the green one. Okay, so this is a little fast. Great. So now we're responding to some click events, and we're getting really close. So now what I want to do is I want to have a score. So I'll say that the score initially is 10, and what I also want to do is I want to have some score, uh, some score text. And that's going to be some text on the screen that displays what the current score is. So I'll set the score text initially. I'll say score text equals new text with the score. And I'll set the position of that. So I'll say score text dot set position. Well, where do I want that to be? Uh, the X position should be 0, and the Y position should be get height. Okay, and then I'll add score text. So now we see that we have 10 points, and, well, we're kind of doing an okay job of clicking the ball. What we want to do is we want to update that score on these clicks. So if the element was not null and the color was green, then we, we were successful, we'll say, score plus plus, okay? Otherwise, we'll say score minus minus. But that's not gonna update the text. What we need to do to update the text on the screen is say score text dot set text to the new score. So set text is a function that we have on the text objects. So here we go, we have 10 points. Oh, okay, I got it. I'm doing good so far. Okay, this is a little bit hard. So, we're on our way, we're on our way, and the last thing I want to do is, if I get down to zero, I want to give the user a message that they lost. So, I'll say here, if score is equal equal to zero, then we want to Tell the user uh, that they lose. So we'll give them some losing 
some lose message. And we'll have some winning score, maybe 20. And if the score is equal equal to the win score, then win message. So let's write the lose message function. So function lose message. So what we want to do here is create some new text on the screen and tell the user that they've lost and, and stop the timer. So what we'll say is, well, we'll stop the timer first, let's say. So our timer is called change ball. So we'll say stop stop timer, change ball, and then we'll say bear message equals new text, it says you lose. Then we'll say message dot set position, and we'll put that in the center of the screen, so it'll be get width divided by two, minus, we need the width of the text, so we say msg dot get width over 2. And the Y position I'll put at 200 for now. And then I'll add message. So let's see what happens if we can lose and test this out. So there you go. You lose. Let's see similarly if we can if we can try to leave a function for winning. So if you were going to do this in a little bit of a better way we'd have one message and maybe we'll go back and do that after. But right now, I'm going to copy this and write win message. So I'm going to stop the timer. I'll give some text that says you win. And I'll put it at the same location. So let's see what happens. Uh-oh, the problem is I have to win now. Nope. All right, let's make it a little bit easier to win for testing. So let's say the win score is 12 and the delay is 800. Eleven, twelve. 12, I win, great. So what I want to do now is, is improve this code. So it, it does what we wanted it to do. We, we have it and it's more like a game. But if you look at the lines from 41 to 53, you can see that they're almost exactly the same. And this is the point we've been trying to stress over and over again, is that you don't want to have repeated code. So we're stopping the timer, we're creating some message, we're setting its position, and we're adding it. Everything is exactly the same except for what the message actually says. So what we want to do here is we want to write a more general function that uses parameters. And we pass a parameter, which is the message that we want to, to display. So what I'm going to do is write a new function called display message and it takes some message as a parameter and all that code is going to be it's going to be the exact same as lose message and win message actually I'm going to call it uh, text will be the would be the parameter and instead of you lose or you win all that we do is we change that to be text and so we can get rid of these functions and then what we want to do is instead of calling lose message and win message, we say display message, uh, you lose. And otherwise, we say display message, you win. So let's try this out. Let's lose. Oops. Great. Now let's try and win. Great. So what we did is we just got rid of a lot of code and we wrote a more general function that displays a message. And I'll get rid of these print statements for now. And we totally have a game. This is, it's not the most exciting game in the world, but it's still fun to play. I, oh, well, I'll, I'll change the uh, parameters back here. So the win score will be 20 and I'll put the delay maybe at 600 now. So this is totally a game. Uh, you can change the parameters to make it a little more difficult, but it's, it's not so easy and it's fun. Um, so this is how you would go about making a game. I'm going to keep playing this as this video winds down. 
and that's it.